Here it is, the Great Lakes Triangle. All right. When I started reading the, all kinds of mysteries about the Bermuda Triangle, they didn't really make sense to me. I used to believe in the ancient aliens theories. I used to believe that the reason why so many of these yachts, sailboats, kayaks, so many of these Cessnas, municipal aircraft, single engine and twin engine, twin engine prop, military aircraft, the reason why so many disappear in the Bermuda Triangle was because the aliens had some, some, uh, some Atlantic base underwater. That's misinformation, and that's deliberately put out for you to believe. It's not the truth. There's no alien species living in the Bermuda Triangle kidnapping, abducting humans and all. It's not happening. Now, and there were mysteries about that area even when Christopher Colon, who you know of as Christopher Columbus, when Columbus passed through the area, he put it in the ship's log. It's been published for people to see today. He saw unusual phenomena and documented it in that area of the world when he sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. So uh, this is way before. So that's why I'm telling you that because a lot of people have the theory that it's always oh, military industrial complex. They put this stuff out because they're trying to keep people out the area. No, that's absolute BS. Before the military industrial complex was even built, this was already documented in the historical record about that area. So. Thank you, Barney. <clears throat> so now, um, when I started reading all these books, it started it just astonished me about how they dis how people disappeared, and not 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 that they disappeared, but the survivors, those who experienced phenomena, but they didn't get taken. That's what I focused on because their stories were very unusual, very unique. To be in a Cessna, a single prop, and looking at sky and blue cloud over the Atlantic like you always do when you fly this route, and then to all of a sudden feel something is wrong and look to your left and see a, the sky, actually the white clouds and the blue, nothing's moving anymore. Now it breaks into different fragments and separates and then begins corkscrewing. That's harrowing. But it's exactly what I believe. So when I read this guy's account, I was like, whoa, this is a perfect example of what I believe. The sky is not what we think it is. It's illusory. It's hiding machinery. This is my belief. I assume this belief because I had to create an amalgamation of all the anomalies I've read from all these historical and scientific books. Nothing makes sense outside the context that the sky is a lie. And it's hiding something that that acts like gigantic machinery. So, with whole vaults full of full of materials that it just opens sometimes and dumps in the dumps on the world. So, this guy sees that, and he perfectly describes that. Well, another thing, another. So when I read that about the Bermuda Triangle and that people on yachts have seen derelict ships in yellow fogs. A yellow fog appears, and yet the water isn't moving like it's supposed to, and the ship isn't in the water like it's supposed to be. It's almost as if they're looking transdimensionally into another time period, but at the exact same location here in this geometry. But something is wrong. It's erratic. And people in our holography, those of us, those of us in the 20th, 21st century, Look and see a ship that's 200 years old that doesn't appear to have anybody on it, and the masts are broken. It looks like it's been through a storm. The sails are all all ripped are all ripped up, and the ship is just floating basically a few feet above the water, as if the ocean level has dropped some. In the holography, that's been that's stuck there for some reason. It's there. Things like that get absorbed into my informed field and they get compartmentalized with, with things that I've read from like the Barney, Barney Hill story from the 1960s, UFO accounts from the 1970s that don't make sense, but they're describing the same thing. But now on land, imagine being in a car driving down the road. All of a sudden, there's a bright light in front of you. A beam, a beam comes down out of the sky as if a window opens and light comes out. And you watch a cow 
levitate. And the cow looks like it's been cut out of a picture. It doesn't move. It doesn't struggle. It's absolutely frozen in time, almost as if a piece of time space was frozen. And it's only two-dimensional, flat. And it's just being lifted up into the sky. It's gone. The light disappears. And all of a sudden, your headlights and your engine and everything comes back on. You're, you're good to go. <coughs> How do you process something like that? But it's happened to many people. Now, what I'm interested in is not, the, is not what happened to the human that observed it. And I'm not interested in what happened to their vehicle. I'm interested in the optics. Because when you're driving down the road, you're going to see a cow. But he's going to be three-dimensional. You're going to see all different areas around it because the simulacrum is able to feed us reality tunnels and holography as long as we're going in areas that it's already built sufficiently for, such as streets and roads and highways. Those are all very, very well populated with, with data by the simulacrum because people are always going up. What's not populated is a country road where somebody comes down and next thing you know, Something outside the construct reaches in and pulls something out. Bad timing. Something's wrong with this scenario. I don't believe the simulacrum is godlike. I don't believe it's perfect. I believe there's been many edits throughout history. Being able to ascertain this is the value of accepting more and more data into my informed field. Now, I take all the mysteries in this book and I catalog them and they comport with things that, that are in the UFO abduction phenomenon. Unfortunately, I don't agree with the fact that it's UFOs abducting anybody because I've shown in other videos that UFOs do not act like what we're told they are. These aren't unidentified flying object as vehicles. These are something else. They defy physics. They're amorphous. They change their opaqueness. They change their, their, they change their size and dimensions. These aren't vehicles. These aren't even material objects. Now I have to add that to what they do. What have they been recorded to do? They disappear vehicles and people. So when I put these two data sets together... Well, excuse me, when I put these data, series of data points together from two different phenomena, what, do I, what am I left with? I'm left with something that's acting like a range finder, and it changes size and shape when it gets close to what it's searching for. It lures planes and ships and people to certain areas, pretending to be fairies dancing around a ring, pretending to be a will-o'-wisp that bounces on the tops of bushes so, so children follow it into the forest, pretending to be something, but it's a range finder, and once it gets close enough to you, it can open up a dimensional envelope, and you are now a part of that holography, so when it collapses that field, you're no longer here, you're wherever that thing wanted you to be. That's my conclusion, and I've published this over and over in my videos and in my published books. This is a, this is a long, I've long had this theory, because UFOs do not act like vehicles at all. I don't believe they're populated by people or creatures. They're not. They're range finders from outside the construct, and sometimes they're work, they work, and sometimes they don't. So, that's what I derive from books like this.